Good morning. Thank you all for joining us here today. I'm pleased to be here with the mayor of Quincy, my friend Tom Koch, Jennifer Bosco from the National Consumer Law Center, Marcy Pina Christian, Executive Director of the Human Relations Commission and Human Services Coordinator for the City of New Bedford's Department of Community Services, also an executive board member of the New Bedford NAACP. Assistant Attorneys General uh, Nathan Forster and Elizabeth Anderson of our Energy and Telecommunications Division, and Kristen Ruggiero, an affected customer from Middleborough. You'll hear from Kristen shortly. We're also joined in the audience today by Executive Director of the Mass Energy Consumers Alliance, Larry Cretion, and the lead author of our state of our uh, report we're unveiling today, uh, Susan Baldwin. We're gathered here today to take a stand against an industry that has abused and overcharged Massachusetts customers for way too long. These are competitive electric suppliers. Many of you have heard about these companies. They go door to door, send letters in the mail, and call over and over again with promises of a cheaper electricity or a locked in low rate that they claim will save you money. They say that if you sign up and switch from your company to their company, they'll deliver consistently lower savings and uh, lower bills. Across Massachusetts, hundreds of thousands of customers have made the switch to these suppliers. Many people have called my office to complain about their bills or to ask if what these companies are saying is actually true. In the last three years alone, we've received over 700 complaints from people all across Massachusetts reporting aggressive sales tactics and outright deception. Our report today details many of those problems. Companies that pretend to be utility companies to get you to turn over sensitive information. Businesses that keep calling over and over again. Door-to-door -door salespeople that force their way into customers' homes. The targeting of elderly residents, the targeting of low-income residents. People who've signed up friends and family for these programs only to discover that the deal was a ripoff. So based on these complaints, we decided to take a closer look at what is actually happening in this industry. We wanted to find out exactly what these companies were doing and were they delivering on what they promised. We spent two years working with an independent energy consultant on a report that we're publishing today. We crunched numbers on a dozen uh, companies and thousands of customers in cities from Quincy to Springfield, Worcester to New Bedford, and Boston, and the results are shocking. All across Massachusetts, in every community we examined, hundreds of thousands of residents aren't paying less on their electric bills, they're paying more. In fact, they're paying a lot more. Here's how this works. So in Massachusetts, residential customers, just like businesses and commercial industrial customers, can shop around for the best electricity rates. That means they get to choose their electric supply from their utility, whether it's National Grid or Unitel or Eversource. That's called basic service. Or they can choose from a so-called competitive electric supplier. Competitive supply has been a good thing for commercial and industrial ratepayers in Massachusetts. And many towns have municipal buying programs that they're proud of. But our study shows that competitive supply has been a really bad deal for individual residential ratepayers. Between July 2015 and June 2017, we found that Massachusetts customers who switched from competitive electric supply, uh, or switched to competitive electric supply, paid $176 million more than they would have paid had they just stayed with basic service. And over and over and over again, we found that these companies focused on signing up people who could least afford it. They targeted families having the most trouble paying their bill every month. Our investigation found that one in three low-income households in the state, 36%, were signed up with a competitive supplier 
from 2016 to 2017, double the rate for higher income households. For low income households in African American communities, participation is even higher. Over and over, we found evidence and received complaints that these companies targeted susceptible elderly residents as well. A lot of the time, what happens is these companies would offer an initial low rate that balloons, of course, in time to a rate much higher than the utility basic service rate. Low-income residents paid an average about $230 per year more than they would have paid had they stayed with basic service. Some people we found paid an extra $500 more each year. And the collective toll on our cities and towns is significant. In New Bedford, the residents who signed up are paying an extra $100,000 per month. That's money out of the pockets of residents in these communities, $100,000 alone in New Bedford each month, going to competitive suppliers. In Worcester, 19,000 families forked over an extra quarter of a million dollars in just one month last year, quarter of a million dollars. And Mayor Koch knows these companies well and will tell you about how they are operating in his neighborhoods. In a few moments, you'll hear from Kristen, who will share her story. Look, companies can't promise lower rates but deliver higher ones. Companies can't target our communities or our senior citizens. That's why change is needed. Yesterday, my office announced that we secured a, a $5 million settlement with Viridian Energy, one of these competitive suppliers. They'll be paying almost all of that money back to customers here in Massachusetts. In 2014, we reached an agreement with another competitive supplier, Just Energy, which paid $4 million back to consumers. But our report shows that far too many customers continue to be taken advantage of and taken in. So today, I'm announcing my intention to work with the legislature, the Department of Public Utilities, and the administration, as well as with the energy industry, civil rights, and consumer advocates to end individual residential competitive electric supply in Massachusetts. We'll be working to change the law to protect our residents. It's time to stop the targeting to end the abuse and restore fairness. I want to level with everyone here. These companies have built an entire business on these deceptive practices. They've made hundreds of millions of dollars in the process. But as this report makes clear, they're not protecting the public. They've been cheating the public. That's why we're making this announcement today. And I'm really glad to be able to be here with all of you. I'd now like to turn things over to my friend, Mayor Koch. Uh, thank you, Madam Attorney General, and thank you for the invitation to stand with you today uh, on this issue. Um, I see Larry Cretion out here who used to serve in the local government. We in local government spend sh so much time, resources, and energy to uh, help people stay in their homes, particularly senior population, to provide opportunities for low-income housing. Uh, for those people that are most vulnerable and have the most challenges financially, we work at that very hard, whether it's through abatement programs, the assessors, uh, deferred taxes, all of those things. Uh, to, to see what's going on in this industry, to take full advantage uh, of these people on a daily basis, those people that are struggling uh, to maintain their home or just to maintain uh, a quality of life with their families is very, very disturbing. Uh, and I'm so proud to stand with the Attorney General uh, on this issue. Um, there was an old uh, public servant in Quincy that Larry and I know well, John Gillis, who was longtime city clerk, and his reputation was known as he always looked out for the little guy. And this is another example, I think, of the Attorney General looking out for the little guy. She's done an incredible job for that. I, I uh, applaud her for the work today, and we'll do everything we can uh, to make a difference in Quincy. It's gotten so bad in Quincy, our police department had to issue an advisory report on this. We had so many complaints on the issue. So Attorney General's office was ex extremely responsive, and I'm so delighted to see the action she's taking today, and I'm proud to stand with her. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Mayor, and thank you for uh, the partnership here on this and on so many issues. And we're hoping that uh, 
That's exactly why we're taking this action today. When you have police departments burdened as well by uh, businesses, practices, and activities, it shows you how uh, pervasive and how problematic this issue is, not just for individual ratepayers and customers, but look at the effect it's having on our cities and towns. Uh, and speaking of effect, to give you a sense of what it is we're talking about and why we got into this, I'd like to introduce you now to Kristen. Uh, Kristen lives in Middleborough, and she'll tell you about her experience with a competitive supplier. Thank you. Um, I was recruited by a friend who told me that if I signed up five customers, I would get passive income. And I did it as a favor to my friend, but I realized soon into it that it was a pyramid scheme and I decided to opt out of it. I thought that I would get great rates. I had a lock-in for six months and within four months they went up on our rates. You couldn't get in touch with them, try an email, get a canned email back and never hear from anybody and um, we just had a really hard time getting out of our contracts and they prey on people to get your friends and family to join and I didn't want to do that I didn't want to put anyone in a bad position and so I opted out of it but like I said they wouldn't let you out of the contract so I contacted the Attorney General's office and that's where it started back in 2014 because I just thought they were operating unfairly um, so now we're out of it and I'm grateful that um, the Attorney General's office is taking action against these companies because it's so unfair. Terrific. Thank Thanks, you. Kristen. Thank you. Jen? Hi. Um, I'm an attorney at the National Consumer Law Center, and we're a nonprofit organization that advocates for <clears throat> the interests of low income consumers in Massachusetts and around the country. And I want to applaud the Attorney General and her staff for the great work on this report and their ongoing enforcement actions to rein in some of the, the worst abuses in the competitive electric supply market. Um, and the report really confirms what we've been hearing at um, the National Consumer Law Center for years when we hear from consumers and social workers um, who tell us about the abusive marketing practices, the deceptive contracts, the um, overcharging and overpaying for electricity and the targeting of vulnerable communities. Um, for instance, we've heard from residents in Lynn who told us about um, salespeople posing as National Grid employees and somehow sneaking into a locked apartment building and then pressuring the residents there, getting to the point of harassing an elderly resident. Um, we've heard from a social services organization in Western Massachusetts that um, assists people who are hearing impaired and they told us about a client who was pressured into signing up for competitive electric supply without really the opportunity to ask questions or get a real understanding of the contract. Um, and these are problems we don't just hear about in Massachusetts, but these are problems across the country and other states that have deregulated their electric markets and allow competitive electric suppliers to operate. Um, so even, you know, some of the states with really strong consumer protections like New York and Connecticut and Illinois report similar problems, similar patterns of abusive practices. Um, so I just want to thank the Attorney General's office again for bringing attention to this issue and we look forward um, to advocating for consumers together. Thanks. Good morning. I too share in this victory. Um, on the part of the Attorney General's office. And in the city of New Bedford, I'm very excited for residents of New Bedford um, who have been greatly impacted uh, by these decep deceptive tactics. And it started in New Bedford in 2014 with Just Energy. We receive numerous complaints. We have two programs out of the Department of Community Services, the New Bedford Local Consumer Program and also the Face-to-Face -face Mediation Program. And we received numerous um, complaints, which we referred to the Office of the Attorney General. And since Just Energy, more and more companies have canvassed our area. And it is, we have a large immigrant population, as well as our communities of color have been impacted greatly by this. And you can just imagine the frustration uh, when you're living from paycheck to paycheck and you think you're going to save and then you find that your electric rates have actually doubled. And we have no, witnessed where 
to get out of these contracts anywhere from $200 to $600 to try to break these contracts. Um, so we are very pleased with this victory today, and I am happy to stand here with others who are, who are consumer advocates as well. Thank you. Terrific. Thank you, Marcy. Uh, I'm happy to take any questions at this time related to this matter. Yeah, it's um, it's we're focused right now on electric suppliers. And so you're saying you want it to end uh, mm -hmm. for residential customers, but you might keep, want to call to keep it open for um, commercial and business types of entities. That's right. We don't paint with a broad brush here in this office. The work that we do and the recommendations that we make, including the recommendation today, are based on what we've actually. Uh, gathered for information, gathered for, for evidence, and based on all of that, which you see detailed in today's report that we're releasing, we are calling for an end to competitive supply in the residential marketplace. The fact of the matter is that, um, as this report shows, the competitive supply market has not and will not provide savings to residential customers in Massachusetts and therefore we're making the recommendation that this industry, that portion of the industry, uh, end. It can continue on for commercial um, and industrial uh, uh, rate payers, um, but based on what we've seen to date time and time again, this is not a good deal for residential customers in Massachusetts. So it's been a while since I looked, looked at this, but it usually, they usually come, the offers come and they, they lock you in a slightly lower rate than the basic service. Mm -hmm. But basic service changes every six months. So you're sort of gambling that the, your rate will, will remain lower or go lower than, but are you saying that they actually flip the rates around and charge you more after they've promised you one rate? Yeah, not unlike what we saw with the subprime mortgage industry, we see fluctuating rates and we see balloon rates that really aren't adequately disclo disclosed to customers when they're pressured to sign up. Importantly, Bruce, we took a long-term view here and we looked at this over time, cognizant of the fact that rates do change during interim periods. So uh, we took a long-term view and, and assessment, uh, and I credit Susan Baldwin with her work um, to, on that effort. but. Uh, based on that, over the long term, we saw, as I, as I said earlier, an average of a $230 a year increase on a customer's bill. But is that because the customer <coughs> locked themselves into a rate that turned out to be bad, or is it because the company uh, promised them one thing and then it, it didn't happen quite that way? I, I'm, I'm, I it's, both. it's both. It's both, because this involves um, – I think what at bottom would be described as deceptive marketing. It's why their sales tactics are so aggressive and they continue to harass and go door to door to try to uh, get people locked in. And, and they're not coming clean with what is actually going to happen to these customers. So there's both deception there in terms of misrepresentation about what might happen, you know, promising promising savings, but at the end, delivering just a higher bill to the customer. How many suppliers like mm -hmm. this are there in Massachusetts? Well, there are a number of suppliers, dozens in fact, um, and we've had complaints against many of them um, in this office. The competitive supply market, it's about 500,000 households across Massachusetts, about 20 percent of the state uh, gets, uh, it gets their, their bills from a competitive supplier. Sounds like some of what you're talking about already is illegal. Uh, so, what laws would need to change to get the rest of the way of that gap? You're absolutely right. It's illegal to deceptively target and market to customers. It's illegal to say you're going to deliver X and then at the end of the day deliver Y. Uh, particularly in a way that harms customers. So that's why we pursue this as a consumer protection matters. When these complaints come in, I thank people like Kristen out there. This is how we do our work in the Attorney General's office. We take in complaints from the public. We're able then to identify certain patterns and practices, and our job is to go out and enforce the law, enforce laws that are there to protect consumers and to protect ratepayers. Based on our vast experience having investigated and now brought enforcement actions against competitive suppliers. Based on the study also that we conducted um, 
over the last few years, it is our recommendation that the, the, the work that needs to happen, the change we need to see happen right now in Massachusetts is that there be an end to competitive supply in the residential market. And I remain committed to working with the legislature and others uh, on an appropriate way to do just that. Because at the end of the day, this is about protecting people, protecting customers, and not taking advantage of them. And we want to make sure there's fairness in the marketplace. Does this have implications for Movements towards um, municipalities or individuals being able to opt into um, different amounts of, of renewable energy or clean energy. Uh, does you know would this have any implication for that? I mean, I know that mm -hmm. a lot of cities and towns around Boston are, or, I'm sorry, around Massachusetts are seeking more options in how they procure energy. That's not a resident. That's a municipality. Yeah. Uh, there are any number of cities and towns who participate in something called municipal aggregation. This does not change in any way the ability of cities and towns to uh, bargain for or sign up for uh, uh, plans and suppliers that make sense for their residents. So we're not doing anything to disrupt the municipal aggregation market. Your city or town's municipal aggregation plan will not be affected. What we are trying to affect, though, and achieve here are good choices for customers. It's as simple as that. We want people to have choice in the marketplace. We just want those to be good choices and not choices that are going to, we know, result in harm to customers. I guess, I guess I, I'm still a little confused. I get, I get your point, mm -hmm. but is it, are they selling a bill of goods in, in that it's going to lower your rates over two years, but if you read what they're offering, it's, it's a fixed rate for two years, but you don't know how that's going to compare to what the utilities are offering? Or are you saying they offer you one rate and then charge you a different rate? Yeah, it's both. It's both deceptive um, marketing on the part of the company, misrepresentations about what is actually going to happen. And that's uh, borne out by what we've seen in some of the videos I'm sure you've looked at where the salespeople are going door to door and knocking. Uh, whether it's by telephone, some of the conversations is reported to us, um, and, and other marketing materials. So it's both you know, misrepresentations um, about in, in writing, but also um, in just their general engagement with, with customers. And you know, we understand, Bruce, that there is a certain level of, uh, of change within markets, and we know the price of electricity, as you know, goes up and down. We understand that in the office, and our great folks in the energy division spend a lot of time on these issues working on behalf of ratepayers. What's problematic, though, is when you have companies out there that are outright making misrepresentations about movements within that market and what that's going to mean for your electric bill and your household at the end of every month. And that's why we take the action that we do uh, based on the evidence that we've connect, uh, collected and, and the report that we've, uh, that we've released today. And if your bill or if your proposal became law, <coughs> residential customers could only buy basic service from their utility. Well, there may be other options out there. I mean, I, I do support, we, we, of course, this doesn't change municipal aggregation. Um, and uh, towns and cities may be able to select, of course, and continue to select a competitive supplier that's going to work best for, for their residents. So this would only affect the individual ratepayer, uh, the individual customer. That's what we're, we're seeking to end. I mean, it seems to me if you see a space and a practice where time and time again people are getting taken advantage of, people are getting hurt, uh, we want to stop the bleeding and we want to make sure that those practices end because our job is to look out for, as Mayor Koch says, the little guy, and to make sure that, uh, that our residents and customers are protected around Massachusetts. Last one on topic. So this is a big move. As you know, Seven News did a story about these kinds of complaints, and we've gotten lots of complaints to the station. Are you the first AG in the country that's called for such a bold move? I, I think you are, that this is a first in the nation kind of call to end this kind of industry for residential customers. Um, I believe it is. Uh, I, I, I think we may be the first. Uh, other, uh, others can confirm that. But, you know, uh, I describe it as a common sense move. Um, when you see these practices over and over and over again, and I appreciate the reporting that's been done 
on this issue, bringing attention to what's happening out there in our communities. To me, this is about common sense, and it's about making sure that people don't get taken advantage of. And there are things we can do to prevent that, and I want to work with others to make sure that happens right now. Thank you very much for being here.